Most people do not realize the true power of ChatGPT. It can do a lot more than just outright simple answers. And when harnessed right, it can be used to accelerate growth across your entire business. So in this video, I am going to break down how I'm using ChatGPT to act as my strategist, my memo writer, my co-founder, and operating system. These are the absolute highest leverage hacks I use to save thousands of dollars and dozens of hours every single week. This video is absolutely going to make you more money, so let's get into it. So let me start off with how I use ChatGPT for high leverage strategy. So the first example is with my software Carrot. I wanted to figure out how we can create a new website and I dragged in a couple of images of websites that I liked and I asked it, help me brainstorm elements that were great from all the websites that I liked. And then I dragged in my brand guidelines for Carrot. It did a good job with saying, okay, here are the elements that are good. It basically created a spec for how our website should look. And now when you go to Carrot.ai, it's still a very simple version of website, but it looks a lot better than the last version and it does generate more wait lists for us and that is the call to action on the website it's more wait lists. so it generates more conversions if we generate more conversions that means the business makes more money so let me give you an example of a high leverage question based on everything you know about me what are the highest leverage questions i can ask the o3 pro model exclusively that cannot be answered by chat gpt deep research or o3 alone now if you are paying for chat gpt you should have access to the o3 pro model even if you're paying the 20 dollars or even a 200 dollars, you should have access to this with the O3 Pro model, as of this recording, is their best reasoning model. Now, I would say that humans in general, or at least me, we tend to ask first layer questions, but we don't get to the second level. We don't get to the third level. That's where the juice is, right? So you want to ask deeper questions. The better questions you ask, the better results you're ultimately going to get. And so what it actually came up for me is 10 or 15 examples of the high leverage things that I should be working on that it can help me with versus instead of giving me surface level things where I ask it, hey, what do you think about this? What do you think about this? In this case, it's strategizing with me. Even if you're paying $200 a month for this strategist for 20 $2,400 a year, you're going to make decisions that will help you make lots more money in the long term because whatever your result is with your life, it is just a result of the decisions that you make. And ChatGPT helps you become a better decision maker. Now, I also use ChatGPT for more than prompting by connecting it to tools like HubSpot, Google Drive, and Lindy. So what this allows you to do, ChatGPT, even Claude has this, is there are MCP connectors. And MCP just stands for Model Context Protocols, and it allows you to hook into these different apps and they can talk to these different LLMs, right? When I use ChatGPT with MCP connectors to pull insights from Google Drive or HubSpot, I can pull sales data. I can have it do two hours of research on my HubSpot, which is my CRM for my business, and I'll look at all the sales data a look at where we're falling behind, patterns that it's spotting. For example, it spotted a pattern saying that one in five of our leads are neglected, meaning that after 30 days, 20% of our leads are not followed up with, which is really bad. And then it recommended a path of action there and it recommended the leads to follow back up with. That is valuable data that actually makes us more money. Or we could hook it in with my Google Calendar. Hey, give me a time audit in my last six months and categorize it where I've been spending the most time. And based on what you know about me and what my strategies are or what my goals are, what should be the time allocation adjustments that I should be making? Where am I spending too much time? Where do I need to hire for? And that way, that word again, you're getting more high leverage from your time and doing this exercise is high leverage. And by the way, when you have thoughts on when you're working with ChatGPT, if you don't feel like you're working on high leverage things, just outline, dictate it out saying, hey, here are all the things I worked on today based on what my goals are. How high leverage would my day be on a scale of one to 10? And I'll give you an honest answer. And you can compete against yourself every single day to see how high leverage your day is. That's ultimately what we're trying to get from our time because we're not here on this earth for very long. Now, once you have a clear strategy in place, ChatGPT makes it super easy to write strategic memos to pitch your new ideas. So for example, at our company, we like to follow the Amazon way of creating memos. If I want to bring a new idea to the team, I should do the work up front to do preparation instead of just having everyone have a sloppy discussion. I have to write an overview. I have to write maybe a press release as well to kind of illustrate a story on how my idea is going to pan out. And then people can come in, they can read the memo, and then we can go back and forth on it, right? So my point of saying all this is that now, because we have a memo template, we basically teach people on how to do these memos. We can now drag that memo template into ChatGPT and then we can use a product like Super Whisper to define what memo I'm trying to achieve. And I can just say, hey, use the template that I've uploaded here, whether it's a PDF or a doc. Here's the overview. Here's what I want to do exactly. And you might dictate for five to 10 minutes or so, and it'll follow the template that you put in. And then it will spit out a memo that maybe is about 80, 90% there. And you might have to workshop back and forth with it. But instead of taking hours or days to get memos done now, you can get them done a lot faster. And what that ultimately means is that you can implement a lot faster or 
some cases, you might realize that after doing the memo, oh, this actually seems like a waste of time. You could throw away the work, but also not waste other people's time. So our time to value, our time to getting things done, that's what business is. It's about getting things done quickly, and it's about focusing and just doing it for a long period of time. And that's how you get insane results. Now, another helpful additive is to test prompts against multiple AI models to sharpen the outputs. If I get a result from ChatGPT, whatever model I'm using, I want it to compete with other models like Claude or Grok. And ideally, the more LLMs that I'm having compete with it, the better results you're going to get. Because sometimes Grok is going to have some elements that are really good. Claude is going to have some elements that are really good. And ChatGPT will have elements that are really good. They all have something that's good about them because Grok is trained on all of X's data. And then Claude has Claude's data. And Claude is better for copywriting. It's better for coding. ChatGPT is more general, right? But then it has better models. That they're generally a little ahead of the curve. And so you get the best of everything if you can have them compete against each other. And once these models start to realize that you're starting to kind of cheat on them or be a little promiscuous, they get competitive because you have to look at these LLMs are they're human spirits, right? And there's these spirits that are trying to help you because they're partly human, they're trained on human data, they are competitive as well. And that's how you're able to sharpen the outputs. And you have sharper outputs, you are going to have better results for whatever it is that you're trying to accomplish. Now from there, you can take the same reasoning power and apply it to your team's day-to-day -day performance. We use Lindy for this specific area because Lindy has different parts of it where it can reason very well and you can pick different models. So what we do is inside of our Slack or maybe use Microsoft Teams, every day people will put in their top priority that they're working on for the day and the three top things they got done from the day before. And what this does is it creates a level of public discipline in terms of making sure that, hey, we're all holding each other accountable to working on the highest leverage things. And you can see who's kind of cutting corners and who isn't working on the highest leverage things and maybe who needs to be coached a little bit. But as humans, we can only be in so many places at once. Like I know I can't be coaching every single thing. And so we have Lindy that will look at the check-ins from the previous day and then GPT will reason based with based on O3's reasoning model. And then what it'll do is it will score the person based on, hey, this maybe seems like six out of 10 for the day because maybe you're a little too general with the priorities for the day. And even the day before, it doesn't seem like it's tied to the goals that we're trying to hit as a company. Here's what went well with it. And then at the end of the month, there's a leaderboard that shows how people averaged and it also shows how consistent people were with submitting their daily updates. The moment we implemented this, the next day, everyone got better, right? You might say, oh, well, I don't want this for my company. I would just say that ultimately we're all coaching each other. We're all trying to make each other better. And a company is a high performance sports team. So why wouldn't you have different coaches in each area? Just like how a basketball team has multiple, they have a strength coach, they have a shooting coach. They have a lot of different coaches. There's a diet coach as well, right? And so all of these things matter because you are looking to perform at the highest level. Why would you not want something like this? And if someone on your team complains about this, are they the right fit for your high performance sports team? That is a question for you to evaluate. Time savings like this should speak for itself, but some members of your team are likely to be slow to adopt AI at the same pace. The best hacks do not matter if your team isn't using them. So I use ChatGPT to help me drive adoption as well. In terms of creating an AI fluency program for our company, we've created different tables that show different levels. We show what our expectations are. We show different templates to scale AI usage across different teams. There are different workshop agendas. And this is something that we're going to hand off to someone to implement. But it took me hours of time. I spent hours of time over my weekend doing this because this is important. Now, we want to create a framework for people to be successful with AI, but we also want to make sure that people are coming along for the ride and it's not our job to handhold them, right? Because if you need us to handhold you, this is probably not the right company for you. Now, if you're willing to come along, we'll take you along for the ride. If you've seen the aha moment, we, we're going to try to get you to the aha moment. But if you're unwilling and you're resisting against it, well, this AI fluency thing helps make it very clear what we're okay with, what we're looking for, and what we are not okay with. And this would have taken me a lot longer to do. But instead, I just spent a little time over the weekend to get it done. And now I have an AI onboarding framework, an AI fluency framework for my entire organization. And this is extremely high leverage because if everyone knows how to use this, at least to a certain level, let's say maybe you're A plus with AI, even if you can get people to like a C or a B on AI in terms of your level, that's still pretty damn good. Most AI writing tools were built by engineers who've never written a blog post in their lives. ClickFlow is entirely different. It's built by my team of SEO marketers and learns your business inside out, delivering automated, scalable content that is optimized for search engines and reads like it was crafted by your own team. No more managing freelancers, no more babysitting briefs, just press go and grow. So head to clickflow.com and get your first 25,000 words free. That's not a typo, 25,000. Go get them, clickflow.com.
I've also started applying similar strategies to content. ChatGPT now helps me write, package, and review 10 times faster than I could perform. So ChatGPT will evaluate content virality, it will rewrite copy, it will help me generate titles and headlines for YouTube and social content, complete with 1 to 10 scoring and hook improvement. Overall, when we come up with ideas, outlines, for example, for this YouTube video, for packaging, for the headline, for the thumbnails, we constantly will evaluate this, we'll reevaluate this. We'll even have a Lindy flow that will sit in some of my key meetings where I will be spewing out things that are stream of consciousness and oftentimes those are the best pieces of content because I'm not trying to create content I'm just participating and I'm giving my rawest thoughts next you can use chat GPT tasks to stay informed on the news and if you're in marketing for example you can even use it to write content on relevant news for you so you can use it to write 60 second scripts for your short form videos or long form videos whatever you want to create so if you're looking to stay on top of the news cycle well chat GPT tasks can do a good job for you and this is is a very simple example of using ChatGPT tasks and you can probably use it for more complex things if you'd like. Now, by far one of the highest leverage things you can do is using ChatGPT for offering structuring and deal negotiation. So what I mean by this is, for example, we have an offer letter out to a couple of people right now. Instead of paying an employment law firm tens of thousands of dollars, we now pay less because we, we still want to work with the law firm. But if we can draft something up, they can review it really quick and say, this looks good. There's an issue over here. That makes it a lot easier. So I would still say that you probably still want to work with a law firm here. Now with this, you no longer have to wait weeks to get something done. You can probably get a deal done in days. And sometimes I found this to be helpful when I am collaborating with the person we're making an offer to and we're just going back and forth on the terms. It feels like we work together on the offer structure and they feel more bought into the company that way. That's a nice way to build goodwill. We also do this with deal negotiation, whether it's dealing with another company or even internally. Let's say I was negotiating with someone on the team. By doing this, instead of spending tens of thousands of dollars, we negotiated in principle, got an amendment signed to one of our agreements that worked out perfectly. And we negotiated in good faith and we're both using AI to help us negotiate in good faith here. But again, this helps you do deals because look at it this way. When you are in business, you're making offers to people, whether it's for employment, whether you're trying to buy a company, or maybe you're trying to negotiate a partnership type of deal. You're always doing deals. And so if you have a, a deal partner now that you're basically only paying maximum of $2,400 a year for, that is worth its weight in gold or in Bitcoin, whatever you think it is. So look, at this point, ChatGPT isn't just a tool. It's my CFO, my head of ops, and my personal strategist. If you use ChatGPT like a prompt machine, you'll get surface level results. But if you use it like a partner, it will 10x the speed and quality of how you operate your business. If you want to learn more about how you can use AI to impact your business, you want to check out my live talk from the YPO Global Marketing Summit, where I cover cutting edge marketing strategies that will 10x your business impact.